Okay, so the other half of the regulation of glomerular filtration rate and blood pressure is going to be based on hormones. So you kind of want to think about the fact that like, why are there two systems? It's actually three systems, but that's besides the point. There are two systems because one, you want to automatically regulate glomerular filtration rate as quickly as you possibly can. And that's why you're using the afferent arteriole. And that's why you're using the chemical from the macula densa as well. This is the reason for the juxtaglomerular complex is so you can easily send this chemical basically right to the afferent arteriole because they're right next to each other. And then the afferent arteriole can immediately respond so that hopefully you can manage GFR for a temporary period of time until systemic blood pressure returns to normal, okay? Hopefully. I mean, if you're dehydrated, it might not happen very quickly. And if you're hemorrhaging, then it's really not going to happen very, very quickly. But still, your body is going to go through those homeostatic processes to make sure that it tries to do that, okay? So the secondary part of this system is how hormones are actually going to regulate blood pressure and MAP for the whole entire body. So this process is actually a little bit more complicated, okay? So one, if, if systemic blood pressure decreases because you're dehydrated, so you want, again, you wanna think about like, that's a drop in blood volume. Sometimes this is also considered to be to turn on like when you have a drop in sodium levels, but usually we just talk about like what happens to blood volume, what happens to blood pressure, okay? Then again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sense this drop in blood pressure essentially by the juxtaglomerular complex. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw my juxtaglomerular complex one more time here. And like, if you guys can't draw the juxtaglomerular complex, then just write it out. Just, you know, don't feel that pressure that you have to like try to figure out how to draw everything. Although I do highly recommend drawing. I feel like in a class like this, if you don't draw, it's a lot harder to understand some of the concepts. Especially if you say you're a visual learner, okay? So there are a second set of cells. No, they're not green, but I'm going to make them in green. This second set of cells actually surrounds the afferent arteriole. And these cells that are part of the juxtaglomerular complex are either called juxtaglomerular cells, which I'm gonna abbreviate, or they're called granular cells. Okay, so essentially when uh, systemic blood pressure map decreases, these cells, what they're going to do is they're going to release a chemical called renin. Okay. Renin is kind of a hormone. It's kind of an enzyme. It's a little bit like weird. And then, so that gets released into the bloodstream. Okay. Not at the same time, but all the time, the liver, I mean, I hope you know that's the liver. It's my picture of the liver with my gallbladder. I yeah, just remove the gallbladder. That's kind of weird. Okay, so the liver makes a lot of different plasma proteins or blood proteins. One of those proteins is called angiotensinogen. So angiotensinogen is always floating around the bloodstream because the liver is always pr producing it. So when angiotensinogen links up with renin, Essentially what renin does is it cuts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Okay. And then what's going to happen is angiotensin 1 floats around the body until it, it's going to hit the lung area. And the lungs are going to make something called ACE. ACE is angiotensinogen converting enzyme. Sorry, I was going to say angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, so as soon as angiotensin 1 ends up linking up 
with ACE. Basically, it kind of goes to the lungs. It interacts with ACE. And what comes out of that interaction is angiotensin too. Okay, you don't have to draw like this. You could just draw it straight, but I don't have a whole big, I don't have a lot of length. Okay, so angiotensin two is actually going to target multiple effectors because this is not a hormone per se, it's like more of an enzyme or a protein and it, it's gonna target a couple of different parts of the body to help us increase blood pressure, okay? One of those places is it targets the efferent arteriole to vasoconstrict. Okay, you draw yourself a little glomerulus again down here if you have a minute, if you want to. Then you'll be an expert at drawing the renal corpuscle, okay? So just think about, we're gonna close this off. We're gonna make this even smaller, right? And we already made this bigger if that helps you. Because you kind of have to do both of these things. So you can see how blood's gonna flow in. Let me get my black here. Blood's gonna flow in, it gets trapped in the glomerulus and then it kind of can't flow out. So that you can see that this is gonna help us increase GFR as well. Because basically you're gonna create more filtrate as blood gets stuck inside of the glomerulus, okay? Another thing that it targets is basic, basically systemic arteries. That means arteries all over the body and the arteries all over the body basically are going to vasoconstrict. I'm sorry. Yeah, vasoconstrict. And as they vasoconstrict, remember that's going to increase blood pressure because as you lumen gets smaller, there's going to be more force against the walls of the blood vessel increasing blood pressure, okay? And then I have one more over here, yeah. So the other thing that it's gonna target, which I'm not gonna have a whole lot of room for, is it's gonna target the adrenal gland. Really, the adrenal cortex, okay? So my arrow, I'm just going to kind of change my arrow slightly like that. The adrenal cortex is going to release aldosterone. And then aldosterone hits the kidneys. There's my kidney. It's going to hit the distal convoluted tubule, the collecting duct. And essentially what's going to happen is the kidney is going to reabsorb sodium. Ooh, sorry. And H2O falls. So yes, you secrete some potassium as well with aldosterone, but that's, that's a little bit less important here. What's more important is sodium gets reabsorbed, water follows, and as a result, blood volume increases, right? Because we're putting we're putting water back into blood. So as blood volume increases, blood pressure increases, okay? And that turns off our, whole, our hormonal system in a negative feedback loop, essentially, okay? So over here, this is called the RAA system. You can also just call this RAS, like that. So that's a whole, like if you were like, whoa, what happened with that during lecture? At least you can kind of see that, yes, so that part of the system is meant to help you control blood pressure throughout the whole body, not just glomerular filtration rate and not just what's happening at the kidney, but the whole body system, right? That's how you, how you make sure you increase systemic blood pressure. How do you decrease systemic blood pressure? There are other hormones that work, but most of what it is is you turn off aldosterone and you turn off ADH. And because of that, you release more water. So you decrease blood volume, you decrease blood pressure, essentially. And then you do some, like I said, you can change glomerular filtration rate as well to kind of combat 
that increase in blood pressure so that you're not losing too much filtrate either. You're losing the right amount. I know you're probably thinking, but wait, what? The body just has to go back to that normal state. So sometimes you have to turn some system on a little bit and turn some system off a little bit so that it equals out. Okay. All right. So that's how the kidney regulates blood pressure or deals with differences in blood pressure that occur throughout the body. Whoops. <laughs> 